So we're working on the binomial theorem, and if you've been with me in the journey, we've been exploring uh, things like Pascal's triangle, uh, we've been exploring factorial operations, and all that is a build-up to just having a look at what we're about to do just now. We're actually going to learn what this binomial theorem actually is, and it's to do with the expansion of binomial expressions. A binomial expression is simply uh, when you've got two terms in an expression, and we're going to raise that to a certain power. We're going to see how could we expand that without having to do lots of multiplying out. Is there a way in which we could do that? And that we can use a binomial theorem. Uh, now, we did al al already discover the pattern that it is kind of useful. Um, it, so if you, again, early on in the first um, introduction video, uh, I had a I got you to have a go at seeing the pattern in just x plus y to the power of 4, the kind of basic version of this. So we'll have a look at that. Um, what we found was that if it's to the power of 4, then it's to do with the row 4 in Pascal's triangle, which, because it's row 4, has to start 1, 4, and the other elements, if you remember, are 6, 4, and 1. It's good to memorise these, to just know them, uh, rather than have to look them up, but that's our coefficients and we know there's a pattern in terms of the powers of x and y so we start off with uh, the first uh, term is going to have a coefficient of one so we tend not to write that down but i'll put it in here one and then we've got x to the power four which is the full value of the power x to the power four and the y power is actually zero so it doesn't I I exist at all so we tend not to um, write that in at all. It's just x to the power of 4. The second term is to do with the coefficient 4, so it's plus 4 lots of x to the power of 3, one less than the previous power of x, and we're going to add 1 to the power of y, which was 0, so it's now going to be 1. Our next term is going to be plus 6 multiplied by x to the power of 2, one less than the 3, and we're going to add 1 to the power of y, and so on. The next term is going to be 4, x to the power of 1, multiplied by y cubed. And the last term is going to be 1 lot of x to the power of 0, which is just 1, multiplied by y to the power of 4. So we'll just write that as y to the 4. You notice that the, the sum of the powers of x, y in each term is actually still 4. It's a good way of checking to see that you've got it right. Okay, so let's have a break down individual terms here. Do you notice that what we did was we basically said that to get this first term, we used the the zero uh, number in row four, so that's four choose zero. Uh, we used x to the power of four, and we used y to the power zero. Now notice that the zero here matches with the power of y, so the the actual position number. Let's look at the second. One here, but four is actually the f position one in row four. So we call that four choose one. Uh, we've got x to the power three, and we've got y to the power one. Now notice again that this value here, the one in the bottom, corresponds to the value of y. And to get the x one, the the the, the, com the, the connection is that it's four minus that value one, and that same can happen all along. The next one, the 6, is actually 4 choose 2. Notice that the x power is 4 subtract 2, which is 2, and the y power is the 2 itself. So it gives us a general shape here that we're looking at whatever the, the 4 it was determined by the fact that that was x plus y to the 4. If we had x plus y to the power n, then we could say that any term would have the shape n choose r, the x value would be the difference between the two, and the y value, the y power would be just the value there. That's the general shape of each of the terms. Okay, if I bring this in, just uh, as a wee confirmation of that, we can derive the general form of any term. Each term follows the same structure. Uh, you can see we've got the, um, the first part is our combination. We've got a power of x, a power of y, and the way in which we can uh, predict what these powers are going to be, the x term at any point is the difference between n and r, we, and we go through from r from 0 all the way up to 
we take all these individual terms and we have to add them up. Now, you've probably come across the sigma operation before in various things, uh, in statistical analysis, in, in uh, the likes of standard deviation, perhaps. It just means the sum of. So what we're going to do is we're going we're to write out one of these expressions uh, for every value of r from 0 up to n. And that's why, did you notice that when we had x plus y to the power 4, x plus y to the power 4, do you notice that we had five terms? There's five numbers in Pascal's triangle in row 4 because we, we choose r is 0, and then r is 1, r is 2, r is 3, r is 4. So it, it corresponds to all the different values in row 4 of Pascal's triangle. If x plus y to the power 6, we'll have seven terms because we count from 0 up to 6. Okay? So that's the binomial theorem. It's going to help give us a structure from which we can then uh, expand and simplify. So let's have a look at the actual bi binomial theorem at work.